Welcome to Programming's Math Post on Exploring Newton's Method and the Secant Method, and just really trying to find the solutions to f of x equals 0. So the game is to get this little blue snippet of a function, and you want to figure out where it's going to hit the x-axis. So we drag the point A to where we think it might work. So let's first try to do something not so good. Here we go. Um, and we check the guess. We zoom in, and you see that it improved a little, but not too much. And you can see what's going on with the function. I'm not really getting much closer. But now if I kind of follow along with the function a little, you can see that I sort of got a lot closer, well, a wee bit closer, and now, check my guess again, now I'm, I'm doing pretty good, it's getting to be one order of magnitude each time. I just keep doing that until I think I'm close enough. You can see sort of how we really are zooming in better and better. That's because the function is becoming more and more of a line. So as we line up the line, we do a better job. However, it's very hard to actually manually um, cite this up. And we have achieved a really good goal, e to the minus eighth for the zero level. So if you needed something, if you needed to find a solution such that the value of the function is really small, you have some threshold, well, we've done that. And that's what this is. If you really need to find out that value of x, for example, in this particular case, x is in fact pi. And you want to approximate, get a good approximation of pi, that's what you're interested in, then you need to continue. And at this point, while you can, you can still keep trying to do this, this sort of manually citing, it gets, it doesn't really, it's a long process. But if we hit this Newton method, which we'll talk about a bit more in a moment, you instantly max out on the on as far as you can do it. This value is pi to as many digits as the computer actually handles. All right, let's try this again. This time. we will uh, try this Newton method. So that means, you see how this, there's this line here? Fits the function very well. This is the tangent line of calculus. Um, the derivative function here is the precise mathematical function whose slope at the given point, right, which will give you the slope of this tangent line at the given point C. So. This function tells us what the slope of this line is. So you take the x value of the coordinate c, plug it into cosine, and you get the tangent line to sine at the x-coordinate of c, going through the point c. And you can see sort of where it hits the x-axis. It's not actually a very good... Um, approximation. It, it does improve a little, but when you're far away from the root, and this is considered far away because you see a lot of curving of the function in terms of, I mean, you sort of have this flat line, it's kind of still curving around, it still hasn't reached its sort of on the line aspect too much. But now we're starting to get in close. So here, the function is really starting to look like a line. 
And now this is sort of indicating that, yeah, we're going to um, end up zooming in very close. So here, the order of, look at how the order of magnitude jumped. Went from, you know, basically a tenth to uh, maybe like uh, somewhere between one, one in a thousand and one in ten thousand. It's a, it's a big jump. And we do this again. It's e to the minus 11. So that's a huge jump. That's seven orders of magnitude that we just zoomed in on in one step. With Newton, once it starts converging, the number, the, the precision essentially sort of doubles every time. It's not doubling here because e to the minus 16th is as well as we can do. The, the limiting factor here is that the x cannot be known more precisely than this. This is actually pi. And we did that in six steps. No fuss, no muss. So that's Newton. Now let's check out the secant method. So the secant method is actually older. Um, the way that works is you actually need two points before you can start using it. So we'll just line it up here and check the guess. Okay, we're zooming in. Usual stuff. And now we'll hit the secant. So notice here, C is our current point, and over here, this point is the old point. So that's where we just sort of came from. And so you have two points, two points determine a line, you draw in that line, you see where it intersects the x-axis, and that's our new guess. That's uh, more zoomed in. And let's just check that. Zoom in. And there we go. All right, now let's speed up the animation a little more. So again, secant. And let's look at how, look at how, even though the secant, the, this other point is kind of far away, still we're within the region where it wants to kind of make a line and so we check the guess we move in do the secant again check the guess secant check the guess secant And there we have it. So we have again converged. Now, this took the same number of steps as Newton's method. However, um, it's a little deceptive because we have this cutoff here of, of how precise we can get the x. If we were to be able to continue on in this method, Newton's method would go a little faster than, secant, than the secant method. Um, Newton's method sort of doubles the precision every time. Uh, the secant method is sort of like one and a half times. That's the theoretical computation. Now, what is the advantage of the secant method? Well, you only have to compute the function once for each iteration, that new point C. That's all you have to do. Whereas with Newton's method, you either have to compute the derivative function, which can actually be kind of complicated. It's not here. But if you have a, a lot of 
comp composed functions, you start using the chain rule, or you have you're multiplying functions, you're using the product rule, you start to evaluate a lot of terms. But you can also do it numerically, um, which let's just do that here just to show it. So if you don't put anything in the derivative box, initialize, the Newton's method looks pretty much the same as we just did to our eyes. It's, and what's happening is that we're just we're, we're taking a little secant, um, you might say, for the tangent line. We just take a little point really close to C. I believe it's, you take the x-coordinate of C and add 1e e to the minus 10th. That's how I defined it, I think. Um, and so you have the, you have a point really close to C, so you get two points. They're both on the function. You draw the line. So it is a secant line but it's really an approximation to the tangent line of Newton. It's not the secant method line. The secant method uses the previous guess for the second point. Newton's method, you're picking a second point, you're evaluating it. And so, that's what Newton's method does. And again, you can see the same sort of behavior as before. And we max out again after six steps. Now, the one thing about the numerical Newton is that if you were to really try to go for infinitely precise, you'd have to keep moving in that point, probably um, how far are you going out from C. But if you actually have infinitely precise arithmetic at your hand, hey, you can do that kind of thing. Nobody does, and really there's very few applications that require one to know anything this precise. So Newton's method works very well in that regard.